Steven Spielberg's timeless masterpiece Jaws has scarred generations into staying out of the water. Arguably the biggest star of this thriller is the mechanical shark, aka Jaws. But oddly enough, the shark only has four minutes of screen time. Can you believe that? For most of the movie, all the audience sees is Jaws' infamous fin ominously cruising just above the waterline. Although in the end, you do get a pretty good look at him as he's chomping away at that boat. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Yeah, I do think a bigger boat would have definitely come in handy. And who could forget that score? A remarkably simple yet deeply impactful composition consisting of basically two notes. Yes, Jaws is widely considered to be one of the greatest films of all time, still scaring audiences decades after its release. And today, we are looking back at that legendary cast that made this amazing film the timeless classic that it is. If you enjoy this bite of nostalgia, please give it a thumbs up, and also subscribe to our channel to avoid missing any future juicy content. Alright, let's dive in. Roy Scheider, Chief Brody. All hail the Chief. While Roy's acting career actually began in 1951, he really soared to fame with the 1975 thriller Jaws. And given the success of the first film, he would go on to star in its sequel, Jaws 2, as well. But Jaws is not the only classic film that Roy took part in. He also starred in The French Connection alongside Gene Hackman, which won a whole slew of Oscars, including Best Film Editing, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Actor, going to Hackman, and Best Director. Now, Scheider was nominated for Best Supporting Actor, but lost a bit... Ben Johnson in the last picture show. Is it safe? No, it's not safe. You may not remember because he died early on in the movie, but Scheider was also in Marathon Man, starring the great Dustin Hoffman. And Laurence Olivier plays one of the best movie villains of all time, Dr. Zell. Okay, if you haven't seen this, get to it. And if you have, it might be time for a rewatch. Some of his other notable credits include his role in the 1984 film 2010, the 90s series Sequest 2032. Okay, that's a lot of numbers. You with me still? And he also co-starred with Sean Connery in the 1990 film The Russia House. Over Overall, he was nominated for two Academy Awards, The French Connection and 1979's All That Jazz. Sadly, Scheider passed away in 2008 at the age of 75 after a battle with cancer. But we will always remember him as Chief, and of course his epic delivery of one of the best movie lines of all time. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Robert Shaw, Quint. We all remember Quint, the tough-as-nails shark hunter who ultimately gets gobbled up by the humongous shark that we all know and, well, love? For that you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. Quint is a classically trained actor that spent his younger years in the Royal Shakespeare Company. This experience came in handy as he was nominated for an Oscar for his role as Henry VIII in the film A Man for All Seasons, which actually ended up winning Best Picture of 1966. Well, I dance superlatively. That's a dancer's leg, Margaret. It's safe to say Robert Shaw is one of the best character actors of all time. If you primarily know him from Jaws, it may be hard to recognize him all cleaned up in the Sean Connery James Bond classic from Russia with Love. And who could forget his role as the conned mob boss in The Sting with Paul Newman and Robert Redford? Shaw is most known for playing Quint in Jaws, an unforgettable role in an unforgettable film. Sadly, however, he was an alcoholic for most of his life, which seemed to run in his family. He was often drunk on the set of filming Jaws. At one point, he drank so much that he blacked out and needed to be carried back onto set. You wanna drink? Drink to your leg? I'll drink to your leg. Okay, so we drink to our legs. <laughs> Only a few years after the release of Jaws, Shaw unfortunately died at the young age of 51 from a heart attack. On the bright side, he did manage to get in a lot of gray roles. Richard Dreyfus, Hooper. It was a shark. The last surviving crew member of the Orca, Hooper, was played by the legendary Richard Dreyfus. Dreyfus was born in Brooklyn, but moved to California at a young age and was acting on television as young as 15. But he really became a star in 1973, with his role as Kurt Henderson in the George Lucas-directed film American Graffiti. She, someone wants me. Someone roaming the streets wants me. But who could forget his incredible performance as Hooper in Jaws? The chemistry between Dreyfus and Scheider is undeniable. I mean, just watching Dreyfus crumble up that cup is incredible. Soon after Jaws, Steven Spielberg cast Dreyfus in another classic, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. But instead of hunting sharks, this time he is hunting aliens. Dreyfus has been incredibly active in the entertainment biz for decades. One of my personal favorites is a comedy from the 90s, What About Bob? 
job. Dreyfus plays a successful psychiatrist who is driven insane by his patient, Mr. Bill Murray. More recently, he played the infamous Bernie Madoff in a TV miniseries and co-starred alongside SNL alum Chevy Chase in a Netflix film called The Last Laugh. Unfortunately, in 2017, Dreyfus was accused of exposing himself to writer Jessica Teich in the 80s. He responded by denying the allegations, saying that he had been overly flirtatious in the past and that he did regret that behavior, but emphasized that he, quote, values and respects women and is, quote, not an assaulter. Dreyfus is still as busy as ever with four movies in pre- and post-production. Lorraine Gary, Ellen Brody. Now, Lorraine is best known as Ellen Brody, the doting wife to Roy Scheider's character. And while her acting career isn't nearly as expansive as her co-stars, she did have a few notable roles, including I Never Promised You a Rose Garden in 1977, and a recurring role in the TV series Ironside from 68 to 73. Following the success of Jaws, she would go on to appear in the sequel, as well as the third installment, Jaws Revenge. However, after the third movie's release in 1987, she retired from acting altogether. Today, she spends most of her time as an activist. She is on the Human Rights Watch Women's Rights Advisory Committee, which she produced and directed a series of 14 educational videotapes for, and both of her sons have gone on to become film producers. It's pretty cool to learn about what Ellen Brody's been up to. Murray Hamilton, Vaughn. Enter the mayor of Amity, who insisted on keeping the beaches open for the 4th of July in the wake of great white shark attacks. Brody, sick vandalism. Aside from Jaws, he was also known for his roles in Anatomy of a Murder in 1959, The Hustler in 1961, The Graduate in 1967, and the very memorable The Amityville Horror in 1979. Wow, what a list. And let's add to that some huge TV shows like The Golden Girls and The Twilight Zone. I mean, Hamilton worked right up until his death in 1986, with his final project being the 1986 film Whoops Apocalypse. Whoops, I didn't see that. Sadly, he died at the age of 63 from lung cancer, but that man had one heck of a resume. You yell shark. We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. Meadows. If you remember correctly, Carl Gottlieb played the role of Meadows in the film, but he actually had a much bigger role behind the camera of Jaws, because he's best known for co-writing the script and pinning those iconic words of one of our favorite movies. And that's not the only project that he's written for. He's also been a writer for the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, Mama Cass television program, and the Bob Newhart Show. And of course, he did also write the script for Jaws 2. Somebody would say, oh great, we don't need a bigger boat. Not to mention co-writing with Steve Martin, one of the best comedies of all time, The Jerk. He's also been involved in writer's politics, serving the board of directors in 1983, and re-elected for numerous terms thereafter. Additionally, he was the VP of the Guild twice from 1991 to 1994. Overall, just a true talent in the world of writing. And it was fun to watch him on screen too. He has not written anything since 2010, and at age 82, it's safe to say he's probably settling down now after creating some truly game-changing scripts. Jeffrey Kramer, Deputy Hendrix. Jeffrey Kramer has a similar trajectory as Gottlieb, because he too has a very important background behind the scenes. Kramer is a very successful producer in film and TV, co-producing two incredibly popular TV shows, The Practice and Ally McBeal. His role as Hendrix, however, was only his second acting credit, his first being an episode of Barney Miller. He also appeared on hit TV shows like MASH and Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley for a couple episodes each. And if you haven't seen our MASH cast then and now, check that video out next. Jeffrey has certainly found where he's supposed to be, because he hasn't acted since being in the pilot episode of Ally McBeal. But at 74 years old, he does have a new TV series in pre-production called H-Town. And we look forward to seeing that CBS produced show about two Houston detectives. Can you believe it's been 45 years since Jaws was released? And it still continues to be a go-to summer favorite to invoke total fear of beach vacations. So tell us, was there any specific scene that you remember vividly? Losing sleepover perhaps? Let us know in the comments. Oh, and if you enjoyed this swim down memory lane, it really would mean the world to us if you liked this video and subscribed to our channel. That way you won't miss a single throwback video that we premiere. From all of us here at Do You Remember, thanks for watching.